back when third-party support for the Nintendo console was low, Capcom stepped in to help the big end with a set of super mature alpha chads for games called the Capcom 5. Out of the Capcom 5, one game was meant to be exclusive for the GameCube. And that was a big fat lie. Resident Evil 4 was originally released on the lunchbox-looking console for kids we know now as the GameCube. Eventually, RE4 got ported everywhere, and as of this recording, RE4 sold 11 million sales across multiple platforms and generations. Why was this game so successful? What made it so iconic to people? Does the game hold up well? These questions probably have several different answers depending on who you ask. I'd like to do a quick dive through the game itself to try to answer that question. For this video, we will be focusing on the start of the game and how it sets itself up to be what many consider the best game of all time. Resident Evil 4 Ah yes, the old Raccoon City cutscenes. At the beginning of the game, we're reminded of the previous events that happened in Raccoon City, reminding us of the terror that Leon and company went through. We then cut to Leon being driven to his mission of rescuing Ashley Graham, the president's daughter, by Dumb and Dumber from the police academy. Good cop and bad cop think it's dumb to send one singular person to save the president's daughter, but Leon assures them he's not alone. He's got Starsky and Hutch to help him. Spoiler alert, they like die, like, immediately. There's a scene with them impaled once you get to the village. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. The moment you gain control of Leon, you realize this isn't your granddad's Resident Evil. This is your dad's Resident Evil. How close to you guys are you guys in generations here? I don't know, ten years apart. You're gonna have a kid at ten years old? It's just your grandkid, your, your granddad, and your dad are ten years it's apart. It's to show that the game was ten still, years apart. Still kind of older, ten controlling, years apart. Like, you know, this is your dad's Resident Evil with all the corny jokes. We still have the tank controls, but no more fixed camera angles. Now we're super zoomed in over Leon's shoulder. I think this very zoomed in perspective was cautiously thought out. It feels just enough to be third person, but close enough to feel like you can whisper sweet nothings in Leon's ear. What if you don't want to whisper sweet nothings into Leon's ear? Then freaking whisper, I don't know, bad things to Leon's ear. Leon be like, I like that. Like, yo, Leon, I like your cut, G. I like your <laughs> I like that Justin Bieber cut, G. <laughs> you start on a singular path with free range of motion, giving you an opportunity to learn and get used to the controls. The controls are weird. You can argue that they feel clunky, or you can argue that they feel deliberate. Deliberately clunky. Right off the bat, the zoomed-in third-person perspective plus the tank controls don't exactly give you the most comfortable feeling. But you're not here to be comfortable, you're here for survival horror. See, I do not mind tank controls. I do mind tank controls. Yeah, but for the purpose of this video. Fine. See, the person writing this does not mind tank controls. I think they work exceptionally well with the survival horror genre. Most would agree that survival horror has always been about resource management, but it's also about positioning. Figuring out when and where to fight, or when and where to run to, is crucial to the genre and a main mechanic in this game. The first three Resident Evils had fixed camera perspectives that sometimes hid the enemies that were around the corner away from view. In RE4, the zoomed-in third-person perspective with Leon using like 30% of the screen real estate makes it easy for enemies to sneak up on you if you don't pay attention. Leon cannot shoot and move at the same time. Leon needs to stop, position himself, and shoot. Reloading takes time and also cannot be done while moving. After the game lets you get acquainted with the controls, it tests you with one singular enemy. If you die to that one singular enemy, you really suck. Now lesson number one, be aware of your surroundings. Bam bam! First Ganado dead. This didn't seem like a zombie. You check his body. He's not a zombie! Hmm, indeed Leon. We ain't in Raccoon City anymore. Also, you run into a cute doggo trapped in a bear trap. Make sure you save him. If you don't, you are the monster. In RE4, you're constantly being set up for the next scene. You're quickly placed in a village overrun by people that are definitely not zombies and want to kill you. This part of the game is very important. You're being taught that when you are in danger, you really are in danger. You cannot stand still. The Ganados will get to you or will throw things at you. That not a zombie text was a warning that these enemies are a lot smarter than the usual zombies you've dealt with before. Leon has to get good from the start to survive. Shortly after, Leon gets put in a cutscene where he gets hauled into a house and pushes a bookcase onto windows to avoid enemies from coming in. Cutscene ends and when you gain control, you immediately turn where there happens to be another bookcase by a window. Hey, listen! 
You walk towards it, and sure enough, there's an interact button. OMG! The game just taught you a main mechanic without a little Navi or giant-ass text box. Hey! You wonder if this might be more useful to you later on in the game. Spoiler alert! Yes, this will be useful. Lesson number three, be aware of your environment. I also want to note something interesting while writing and editing this. See, in my first playthrough for this video, I took note of the aforementioned cutscene. On my second time playing it, this cutscene never happened. The whole moment of Leon taking refuge, the whole cutscene never happened. <laughs> you never both, happened, yeah. You're basing this whole thing on this one cutscene and it never happens? Yeah, it never actually happened. What type of game is this where it doesn't trigger the cutscene every time? It's because of my second playthrough, <laughs> I, instead of, because I knew what was going to happen, I went around the villagers <laughs> to take them down, you know, one by one and go directly to the Pay clock tower. Pay attention to your environment, but go directly in front of the villagers because otherwise yeah, you won't get this cool cutscene. If you get the first time, the <laughs> average player is going to go directly into the middle of the village and take refuge in a house. And that's what triggers the chainsaw and, you know, the cutscene. But this time around, I didn't do that because I knew what the game was going to do and I never triggered the cutscene. So I never actually recorded that part. I mean, I probably did now. I added it in here somehow. Anyways. On my second time playing it, this cutscene never happened. The whole moment of Leon taking refuge in the house and the chainsaw guy popping out happens if you actually go into the house, which I didn't the second time around. I immediately went to the clock tower, which triggers the Ganados to go away. Just something interesting that I found. Made myself go crazy looking for a recording I never actually recorded, and I thought I made it up in my head. Anyways, when the dust settles, and I realized I wasn't crazy. You finally get a chance to collect your thoughts and the items lying around. This is a must for the game awards players that check their surroundings. While picking up all the goodies left behind, you notice the music died down when the enemies left. Now you're left with the sound of your own footsteps. It changes according to whatever Leon steps on. A different sound for each material. I love that attention to detail. This sound, in my opinion, is incredibly iconic and crucial to the Resident Evil series. The sound design for RE4 is incredible. It is also super important and ties into the gameplay very well. Sometimes you dodge just in time because a dumbass Ganado was nice enough to warn you with a Detrás de ti, imbécil, right before he strikes. Yeah, these Ganados do be imbécil sometimes. Lesson number five, learn Spanish. No kidding. Be really aware of your surroundings. Now we're up to another teaching moment. You get to a barn area. Now we're up to, I was thinking, now we're up to another teaching moment. Lesson in Spanish. Imbecil means imbecile. <laughs> it means Now repeat dumb after ass. me, you guys. Imbecil. Be dumb ass. ass. <laughs> Thank you for visiting Spanish 101. <laughs> now back to the video. Okay. <laughs> Now we're up to another teaching moment. You get to a barn area and immediately notice a blue pendant looking thing dangling from a tree. There's a blue note there that tells you to collect them. You can't reach it, so you shoot it and congratulations, now you got one over 15 collectibles. Collect at least 10 and you get a special surprise. You turn around and there's another dangly pendant looking thing dangling over a dirty well. This one shines bright. Can't interact with it, so you gotta shoot it, right? Just like before, right? Wrong. The thing drops and you recover it as a dirty pendant. The description reads, a very dirty accessory. It doesn't seem to have much value. Did you mess up? Did it lose value? Yes and yes, you dumbass. See, you were supposed to shut the dirty well so the pendant doesn't get dirty. At least you learn that you can shoot shiny things and they'll fall. You probably messed it up the first time around. Everybody does and that's okay. The game doesn't let you stay salty because in the next route, there's a tunnel with several shiny things to shoot and loot. Lesson number two, be aware of your environment for treasure. Resident Evil 4 isn't without its corniness. When you interact with certain things, the dialogue you read are the thoughts in Leon's head. Like this one part when you look at a tea kettle on a table in the t village. Blah. In the what? Like this one part, like when, oh my God, like one day I was like looking at a tea kettle, like on the table, oh like, oh my gosh, like in the village. And then like, oh my gosh, like you look at it. There's like this unpleasant odor, like coming from it. Like, oh my gosh, Betsy, you did not even want to smell it. It didn't, definitely did not smell refreshing. The fudge is Betsy. Like, oh my gosh. Okay. It just smelled horrible, Betsy. Okay. Like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking I'm definitely about to get infected if I drink this, but at the same time, I'm kind of thirsty. You know what I mean? So here I am over here oh just my like God. debating it, you know? 
Let's, let's, about like maybe how I should drink record. it, but not sure. But then I was thinking maybe I should just go to Starbucks. No, but you know that they've been much. like super expensive lately. Stop, Leon. <laughs> Resident Evil 4 isn't without its corniness. When you interact with certain things, the dialogue you read are the thoughts in Leon's head. Like this one part when you look at a tea kettle on a table in the village. There's an unpleasant odor coming from the kettle. It sure doesn't smell like a refreshing drink to me. Or when he sees a portrait picture of Lord Sadler, the main bad guy of the game. Definitely the type I don't get along with. The Ganados are dumb AF. Here's an example of when they were full on imbecile mode. So while that's, that's, wait, is it without the e, right? Well, that's in English. So I yeah, read I wrote it, in, it English. in English. My bad. Say it in Spanish for the full effect. Wow. The Ganados are dumb AF. Here's an example. They were full on imbecile mode. So while you're on your merry way, Pinky and the Brain decide to reenact an Indiana Jones scene and drop a boulder on you. After they do so, they quickly scurry away to an overhead bridge. By the time you outrun the boulder, you're way past the bridge, so you are happy you're alive and continue on your merry way until you hear Detrás de ti, imbécil! Detrás de ti, imbécil! See now, you don't have to kill them because they can't reach you, but they disrespected you. You can't stand for this disrespect. So you turn around and you shoot those asses. Oh, I didn't write that. <laughs> just to show dominance before continuing on. Lesson number nine, assert your dominance. Anyways, you carry on with your life and you run into a Ganado with a Molotov cocktail. Yep, these dudes are smart enough to make explosives. The dude throws one at you and dips. If you panic, you might run into the shed to your left and wait. You see a tripwire bomb, but wait, there's more. There's also a bear trap. And also the Ganados are still throwing Molotovs at you. RE4 is desperately telling you that these imbecile ganados are smart enough to use weapons, explosives, and traps to get you, and it sounds like they would definitely get stuck in their booby traps like everywhere. How are they gonna remember not to trip off their own things? Do they trip off their own things in the game? That's what I write in the next paragraph. You gotta keep going. You immediately revert back to thinking they're dumbasses because in this whole commotion, they most likely will run into the trip wire themselves or blow themselves up with their own Molotovs. Yeah, I figured they were probably dumbasses. I'm yeah. like, how would they be having all of these explosives and everything around and not getting hurt? <sighs> you can use that to your advantage. Whatever the lesson, you definitely are learning here. We keep going forward to, wait, stop. What did we just say? You can't just run all willy-nilly without concern for your environment. These are traps. Sure enough, two tripwire bombs back to back. The RE devs are really giving us plenty of opportunities to learn. Now, if you get caught, it's kind of on you. Lesson number six, don't be an imbecile. Oh no, it's a dead end. Empty room, where do I go? Do I go back? What's in this room? <laughs> <laughs> You're really putting a lot of emphasis into this dialogue, huh? What's in this room? A nice table, nice furniture, a lot of bookshelves full of books, a lot of bookshelves. Oh no, wait, an empty bookshelf. Covering a hole? A secret? Yes. You move the bookshelf, just like the game taught you before. This time, it's to further your advancement in the game. <laughs> Loud thumping now. Should we open it? Wait, Obviously wait, you not. Read, you read that weird. Loud thumping now. Is that how you wanted that to be read? We're going to roll with it. Did you want me to redo that? No, it's fine. With so many question marks, it felt very sarcastic. <laughs> Loud thumping now. Should we open it? Obviously not, but this is a video game and we have no choice. Out comes Luis Serra, who was obviously inspired to be a Spanish Captain Sparrow-like fellow. Ah, oh, a little rough, don't you think? The big cheese. Leon and Luis don't get that much time to get acquainted because Big Cheese comes into the room. Leon, thinking he glitched into a mid-game boss fight, decides to get at him with a sampukuyaku. <laughs> This part perplexes me. Wait, can you say that word again? Sampukuyaku. Sampukiyaku. Sampukiyaku. Sure, close enough. Sampukiyaku. I might just edit Ryu saying that in this part. Sampukayu. That, that's a Pokemon, sounds like. <laughs> it's not. Pikachu! <laughs> Go, Sampukiyaku! This part perplexes me. Why didn't he just pull out of his gun? <laughs> I don't think Leon's pulling out of his gun. He's pulling out his gun. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no.
Oh. <laughs> okay, wait, I got this. Wait, I'm gonna drink some water. This part perplexes me. Why didn't he just pull out his gun? Why did he think to go up to him and kick him? You have a gun, Leon. Bro? Leon, you okay? This cutscene was obviously made to showcase the physical power of Salazar. Salazar just Daigo parried his foot and sent him flying. Leon gets put to sleep and injected with LAS Plagas. No, Las Plagas. <laughs> what the fudge is an LAS Anna. You know how you have you know how you have like the LAX airport? <laughs> this is LAS like Las. It's yeah, a Spanish but term. Here's the thing. If I just see capital letters and I'm reading in English, I did not read Plagas till afterwards. I thought it was like LAX airport. Anyways. So it's LAS Plagas. <laughs> Leon gets put to sleep and injected with Las Plagas. After a few scenes, he wakes up and carries on with his mission to save Ashley. At this point, RE4 has given you everything you need to know about the game. It's time to bring on the heat. Through the beginning of your adventures with Leon, you will encounter several of these red ominous signposts. The first one is right before the village. It reads, It looks like a warning of some sort. I have a bad feeling about this. The second one says, I've seen this signpost before. What voice is that? This is your inner monologue voice. This is supposed to be Leon's voice. This is your inner monologue voice criticizing you for being a dumbass and wondering what's happening with these signposts. The second one says, I've seen this signpost before, right before you get a boulder dropped on you Indiana Jones style. After several signs, you eventually get to the last one that just says, heads up, you and Leon already know things are about to go down. We reach a new area and you immediately see Ganados heading for you. I feel like this is the first real challenge in the game. The task of this area is in finding the two pieces of a medallion that open a door on the other side of the map. There are a ton of Ganados. It seems endless, but if you choose to, you can wipe them all out to leisurely collect the medallions. One of the most important things about a video game is its pacing. RE4's pacing is excellent. There is never a dull moment, and it is hard to stop playing. Immediately after the big medallion fight, things get quiet. Not an enemy in sight. Good job. You think you're safe. After all, you just survived. Surely a safe point is coming up. Nah. Music drops the beat and you're getting jumped again. Lesson number one, never let your guard down. This is a small gripe. And if something, bleh. This is a small, I read that as small gripe. Because you keep putting, <laughs> you keep putting Spanish words in here. And gripe <laughs> means flu, and I'm like, oh, that makes that makes this sense, is yeah. This a small This is flu. a small gripe, and something small you eventually get used to. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. This is a small gripe, and something you eventually get used to, but one of the things that bugs me about the game is weapon switching. You're forced to pause the weapons menu in the middle of a fight, which disrupts the gameplay. While I do think, mechanically, this works because it gives you an opportunity to think about repositioning and what your next move is, I feel like it can be done a lot better. Resident Evil 5 fixed this by doing weapon switching in real time without pausing. Oh no, a portrait of the big dude that whooped Leon. Would want to run into him again, whoa. Wait, 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 my bad, wouldn't. Oh, you said we would. I know, I know, I missed Brett. Dang, Oof. I'd love to wall, dang, I'd Oof. love to wall, I'd, I'd love to wallow <laughs> in my self-pity and just go and. Are you having a blooper within your blooper? Yeah, I would love to go and wallow in my self-pity and run into the guy that beat my ass the first time. Can't wait, let's go. Okay. Oh no, a portrait of the big dude that whooped Leon. Wouldn't want to run into him again. Whoa. Boy. This Kratos looking dude spares you because you are his boy or something. There. Boy. Boy. Also, his red and blue eyes make it look like he's the biggest Nintendo Switch fanboy there is. Also, I noticed that the typewriter save spot is a lot farther to the last save spot than the very first few typewriters. As if to remind you that typewriters aren't going to save you you may have to overcome a bunch of hurdles before you get to a save area. Anyways, now we've come full circle back to the village and we're just getting started. You use the key to enter the previously locked door in the village and oh look, something red and shiny. It looks like I should shoot it. It explodes in a burst of fire. I wonder if this bright red shootable explosive will come handy in future portions of the game. Will come handy. This will come handy. You okay there? Come in handy. Oh, you're right. This will come handy. This will come. 
I don't know if we should be repeating that several times, Anna. Let's just. I'm reading the script. <laughs> we'll come, come handy. <laughs> this, this shootable explosive will come handy in future portions. Wait, that does make sense. No, it's oh, okay. come right, in fine, handy. Fine. Come in handy. Now it just, <laughs> it just sounds so wrong now. <laughs> now it doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> Come in handy is like, never mind, I'm not going to say. Nope, nope, not for this, nope, not for this episode, guys. Nope. No. Kind the sus. Oh, look, another shiny thing. It'll probably drop free money, too. It does. You're rich. Lesson number nine, be aware of your surroundings. What are we, magpies getting distracted by every single shiny thing? Like, good mm -hmm. lord. You find out that Ashley is inside of a church. In typical Resident Evil fashion, the church is locked and you gotta solve some puzzles. Leon calls Hunnigan, his secret service link and guide. Leon's all like, this door is locked. She basically hits him with a, that sounds like a you problem. Hit me up when you finish the job. Anyways, you realize it is a you problem and you carry on and ah yes, an open arena with loud grunting sounds, roars. This couldn't possibly mean a boss fight, right? No, I think that means something else, Leon. Turn around. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. <laughs> Sus roars, though? Bro. This couldn't possibly mean... I need to redo this. The loud grunting sounds is really throwing me off right now. <laughs> oh, boy. It's got to be a boss fight. Nah, fam. You just got your baited. There's nothing here. Lol. You continue on collecting loot along the way, the whole time remembering lesson number two, expect the unexpected. Even the crates aren't safe because you can get jumped by a snake. Look, a boat. Time for a boat ride. And what the fu- Is this the first boss fight? Not much to say about this fight. It's fairly simple and you have plenty of time to react to it. It just comes out of nowhere if it's your first time playing RE4. And that's the point. It's meant to keep you on your toes boss fight isn't coming when you expect it. You get it when you get it. Just remember lesson number five. Expect the unexpected. When you get rid of free will, Leon... Wait. <laughs> free willy. <laughs> free when you get rid of free will. What? What? Let's do that again. When you get rid of free will, that annoying thing that lets you make decisions. <laughs> we're trying to like... We're trying to like... um. Mind wash people Finally, that are watching. It's you know, free will is that useless thing. Let every let someone else make all the decisions for you. Get rid of your free will. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> no, we should cut that out. Save file ten. No, cut. <laughs> That's just a reference for us, right from here. <laughs> well, I mean, if it's in the script, I'm gonna read it. When you get rid of free willy, Leon gets a bad stomach ache from eating too many tacos and takes a nap. Also, here's a scene where Leon gets corny with Hunnigan. Leon, it's been six hours since our last transmission. I was starting to get worried. Don't you mean lonely? Bruh. It's nighttime now, so we're ready for the true survival horror. Some Ganados have morphed their heads into this parasitic looking thing. This is fine. After some trials and tribulations and having just survived the first boss monster, we have what's necessary to find Ashley. La di da di da. <laughs> uh, it's meant to be like while you're walking, you're being la di da da da, you know? La di da di da. La di da di da 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 da. No, no, no. Just like you're walking. You're Leon la walking without a care in the la world. La di da di da. No, you're Leon walking without a care in the world. That's my, that's my Leon walking without a care in the world. Wait, let voice. me. How, how do you do it? La di da di da. What the fuck? Gollum cutscenes, the freeze frames. Oh, that's the oh, fuck. <laughs> That's that's for us. That's for me. It's for a reference for me. Oh, okay. What the fuck? Remember that? You can say the uh, CK. Just say it. What the fuck? What the fuck? Remember that area we tho looked? God damn it! <laughs> I misspelled thought. <laughs> Keep going. I'm having fun reading. You know that I overlooked like six spelling mistakes in the other ones? Oh yeah? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Remember that area that we thought looked like a boss fight and we walked just through it only to realize it was just a random open area that led to the guppy boss fight? Psych! This is the actual boss fight. Lo 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 lo. Shoot down Brawlic Gollum and after getting some help from the cute doggo that you saved in the beginning of the game, you finally defeat the first true boss. You get to the church, solve a toddler's puzzle, and you finally get to Ashley. Now you're just beginning, 
Ashley's very cute, blonde, 5'6", with a relatively short green skirt and two sweaters? Hold on, what's up with Ashley's outfit? She wears what looks like a thick orange sweater that's sleeveless and turtleneck. But she also has another sweater wrapped around her? Is she cold? Is she hot? Why does she have two sweaters? I think her outfit's fine. It makes sense to me. I've worn an outfit that like that's like that before. A sweater and then a sweater over that sweater? Yeah, because sometimes what you want to do is you want to be comfortable, so you wear the sleeveless, like, turtleneck sweater for, like, style and everything, and it looks nice, but you know that you're going to get cold later, so then you also bring another sweater. Like, I've done that before multiple times. It is a question to tackle in another time. The beginning of Resident Evil 4 perfectly encapsulates what to expect for the rest of the game. If you have any lessons that you'd like to share, comment them down below. We love and appreciate each and every one of you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Let us know if you'd like a part two of Resident Evil 4. Okay, bye!